Welcome to the Repsites Family Program with your host, Pastor Veronica Nongo. Join us every Thursday at 5 p.m. as we dive into the hearts of marriage and family life. Brought to you by the Agape Marriage Ministry. Our mission is to strengthen your relationships and prepare you for the times ahead with a focus on being rapture ready. Stay tuned for inspiring discussions and practical advice on nurturing a godly family. Welcome to today's program, to the Respite Family Program. You're very welcome. We had a time last week. I hope you were able to connect, you were able to join us. Well, if you were not there, I just want to give you a brief. Last um, Thursday was the inaugural program that we had for this particular um, program. And I told you that our focus here is on marriage. Yes, we'll talk about marriage. We'll also talk about um, fruitfulness. You know, when, when one has, is married, normally what happens, we expect that they actually have children. So we'll talk about parenting. And then within a family, people eat, don't they? Uh-huh. They eat, they cook. So there'll be some bits sometimes on nutrition. So don't be surprised when sometimes you hear tips on parenting or tips on, um, you know, anything to do with food in the house because that could determine your health situation. So welcome to the Family Respite, Respite Family Program. You're very, very welcome. Now I'm talking about the foundation of marriage. We all know that God is our foundation. And he founded marriage. He instituted, he instituted marriage. Yes, in Genesis 2, 18, what did he say? He, the Lord said, after the creation, after everything. And he kept saying for each one, it is good, it is good, it is good. But when he got to man, he had created Adam at this point. He now said, now the Lord God said, it is not good. It's, I'm reading the Amplified Version. It is not good, it's not sufficient or satisfactory that the man should be alone. I will make him a help, a helper, meet, suitable, adapted, complementary for him. So God now created the woman. We know the story of the woman. He made Adam to sleep, put him to sleep, and from the rib, he took a, a, a bone and made Eve. And Eve it became a human because it was taken out of Adam. But the female version, a different version, a complementary version of Adam. And when he did that, he now put them together as one. He didn't still separate them, physically so, but we are going to get into many, many, many parts of this. Verse 24 of um, Genesis chapter 2 says, Therefore, a man shall leave his father and his mother and shall become united and cleave to his wife, and they shall become one flesh. And verse 25 says, And the man and his wife were both naked, and were not embarrassed or ashamed in each other's presence. Hmm. Hallelujah. So, this is the first wedding we have in the garden. And from that wedding, other weddings have come up. So, our focus is on the God-ordained marriage for the believer, for the Christian. We know that today we have all kinds of marriage. There's a same-sex marriage. There are people who get married to their dogs, to animals. But will you really call that a marriage? <laughs> there are people who do child marriage. There's polygamy, there's polyandry. So there's all kinds of marriage. But our focus here is on marriage between one man and one woman for the believer. A man and his wife. But because of the fall of man, there's pain, there's shame, there's trouble. And unfortunately, 
a lot of people who are married tend to claim, or not claim, they say from their experiences around them, what they personally experience or what they see others go through, that marriage is hard, marriage is difficult. So there's a very negative perception of marriage, very negative perception of marriage. But I want to assure you that, yes, we know there can be challenges, but you can have a heaven on earth marriage here. Now, before I go further, why do people have problems? Why do they have trouble when they get married? Why? First, there's a lack of knowledge. How many people do train to become a husband or a wife? How many people study and are prepared? You want to do medicine. And you go through a course, several years of preparation. Even then, you still do your housemanship and so on. You want to do law, the same thing. But concerning marriage, how many of us actually get prepared, get trained for this life-impacting relationship? Marriage is the closest relationship you have on earth apart from that of parents to children but husband and wife there's nothing as close to it as we have concerning marriage so the lack of knowledge creates problems the lack of knowledge from the choice of a mate to even how to live with that mate you have chosen for yourself and some people say well you chose her for yourself so deal with it you chose him for yourself deal with it, but it shouldn't be so. Marriage is supposed to be beautiful. Now, this lack of knowledge also has to do with um, adjustments, adjustments in marriage. Some people believe that the way you come in, fairy tale marriage, they love each other ever till, till forever and ever. Oh, well. Hmm. When you enter marriage, you will know that there will be need for you to make several adjustments adjustments. We'll be talking about this later, but I'm just so focusing now on why we have problems in marriage. Some people feel it much more than others. So you have adjustment problems, adjustments in different ways. Each, you know, as each year goes by, as each decade goes by, if you are giving life, there are, there's, there are adjustments that ought to be made. Otherwise, are going to have problems. It's like someone wearing a pair of shoes, not your size. It's either too big or too tight. You wouldn't feel comfortable. But when you're able to adjust properly, you'll be able to un- enjoy that marriage and not endure it. Then, what about um, gender differences? The way a man reasons is totally different from the way a woman reasons. So we have gender differences, and these can create conflict in marriage. What about knowing um, the, the, the different backgrounds that they come from? You have been brought up in a different way from your spouse. And so sometimes, or many a time, that will create problems. Level of maturity, the person you married, how, how, how much choice is he or how much choice is, 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 is she? So if one is mature and the other one isn't, there's going to be a disparity. There's going to be some problems. Not only that, in the spiritual area too. If you are not mature spiritually, you're going to have problems. Then some people enter marriage. How ready are you? That's a different big field to talk about. There are spiritual attacks. Demonic powers coming against marriages, coming against families. That's another area. Social media. I don't need to say too much about that, you know. Social media. Problems. We'll talk about that later. I'm just highlighting some of these things that cause problems in marriage. There are many, many more. But the greatest is not being founded on the word of God. God instituted marriage. But how many of us follow his word? How many of us know his word? How many of us know what it takes to be a husband, to be a wife? How many? 
Are we willing to do it the way the Lord wants us to do? Do we know his word? And so these are areas that people have issues. Without Christ, the foundation, you're going to have problems. Without Jesus, the foundation. When Peter, please um, take your time to read through Luke chapter 5 and then Mark um, 4 for yourself and see what happened with the presence of Jesus and the disciples. When Jesus came into the boat, what happened? The fish that Peter couldn't get, couldn't catch the whole night. He had to call for help. Please come. How many of us have the Lord in the boat of our marriage? How many of us have him in our personal lives? How many of us are even submitted to his will? Now, the disciples were, you know, in the way, on the Sea of Galilee when the storm came. They were rowing, rowing, rowing without Jesus. And it seemed as if that boat was about to capsize. And immediately when they called on the Lord, of course, the Lord intervened. Peace be still, he said to the storm. They didn't have that faith. You might be going through certain issues now. And you say, hey, but I've prayed. I have prayed. God didn't answer me. I have prayed. Hey, the man is too difficult. Oh, she's this. Please, just calm down. He says, call upon me in the time of trouble and I will answer you. That's the Lord's words and he's faithful. Have you prayed in faith or have you prayed in anger? Or what kind of prayer have you prayed? Selfish prayer or your accusatory one? Oh, you know, she is the problem, Lord. Deal with her. Tell her. Teach her. Talk to him, Lord. He doesn't hear. He doesn't hear. That's no prayer. That's not prayer. Then, so you need the foundation. Mark, sorry, Matthew 7, 24 to 25. It's the foundation. It says, if you are found dead on the world, the storm will come. The wind will blow. The rain will come. But they will not pull down that house. The fact that your marriage doesn't mean there will be no problems. You will enjoy your marriage. But it doesn't mean there will be no challenges. But if you have Jesus as the foundation of your marriage, then you are going to have a beautiful, beautiful relationship in the end. You will know how to row your boat properly. And if you have him as your foundation, he will keep you. There are the, the, the Ecclesiastes 12.4. Um, the threefold code cannot be easily broken. If it did, the two may free, but the third one keeps it going. So Jesus has to be the foundation of your marriage. Otherwise, you're going to have issues. You're going to have problems. Now, I wrote a book, The Mystery of Marriage. And when I thought I was done, thinking to go, you know, okay, the final um, editing and so on. I just, the Lord just spoke to my spirit clearly that day. I remember where I was standing and he said, no, you're not done. I want you to include this. And what was that? I will just read it to your hearing directly as I put it in the book. The Lord said, and I'm passing the same message to you individually and as a couple. The Lord said, people have lost the meaning of marriage. Even some even among some of my children, draw their attention back to the basics of marriage. It is for not just for pleasure, but for my glory. Within this covenant are blessings which they are losing. Go back to the beginning and you will find solace for your spirit, soul, and body. I am coming back very soon and I will judge the immoral. Stay pure and undefiled for me. These were the words I received and I put them back in the book. If you get a copy of it, you can read much more for yourself. So at this point, I want us to pray. You may have pain in your marriage, but just first and foremost, learn to forgive your partner, your husband, your wife. 
No matter what they have done, please let them go. If you are ready and you're willing, don't just break off. The only time I will say please separate yourself is when there's danger to your life. If your life is being threatened, then you need to seek for help. You need to call out. And don't stay there and say, oh, people will say, well, God forbid that anything happens to you, people will still say. So why not step away and get help and let the Lord intervene? So I want you to just, at this moment, just pray and say, okay, Lord, I will try. I will give myself to you. And if you are listening to me, you haven't given yourself to Jesus, please, I want you to just, at this moment, just say, Lord, come into my heart. Just say it after me. Or say it in your, in your own words as you will. I am a sinner. Have mercy on me. Forgive me. Write my name in the book of life. Cancel my name from the book of death. I believe and I receive you as my Lord, my Savior and my Lord. Thank you, Jesus, for saving me. In Jesus' mighty name, amen. Father, I thank you, Lord, for your daughter, for your son, for any who is listening at this moment. Thank you, Jesus, for saving them. Thank you for the blood that sanctifies. Thank you. As they call on you, you say you will not cast them out. Receive them into yourself and let them be your own from now and forevermore. In Jesus' mighty name, amen. Now, I want to encourage you to please make sure you listen to this program regularly. Every Thursday, we are going to, you are going to have um, um, you are going to have information concerning what and what and what you'll be hearing and how you can contact us. So, if you have any questions, please, I would want you to get your questions ready and send them over to me and we will talk as a counselor as a counseling session and you can please don't call but simply send as a message to this number whatsapp 070 706 88448 i'll take that again 0707 068 Eight double four eight. Thank you and God bless you. WhatsApp only, no calls, please. God bless you. Hallelujah. Amen. Thanks for staying with us on the Websites Family Program. We hope you've been blessed and encouraged. For more enriching content, follow Pastor Veronica Nongo on Facebook and visit our ministry page at Agape Marriage Ministry. Call Discover the Mystery of Marriage Unraveled by Veronica Nongo. Available in ebook, Kindle, paperback, and hardcover. Don't miss The Power Couple. Available in paperback and e-copy. Other must-reads available in e copy include the clarion call for men why god created the woman and how to plan a stress-free wedding your guide and more connect with us on youtube by emailing us at agape marriage ministry international at gmail.com and visit our website at https forward slash agape marriage ministry dot org for more information you can also reach us via email at info at agape marriage ministry dot org see you next Thursday at 5 p.m. God bless.